you to Internachi for uh, letting us uh, participate in this webinar with you and the inspectors. We were recently at the at the Ontario show last year, uh, and that was just we had a great time. We had a booth and just enjoyed meeting a lot of inspectors. And we'll be out next year, so make sure to stop by our booth when you come by. Um, so Dylan McIntosh will be presenting here with me as well, and we'll get to the introductions in just a little bit. So to kick it off, you know, we're going to be talking about how AI is, you know, revolutionizing, you know, things in home inspection and, and even in our whole lives. And we'll talk a little bit about our product, uh, which is Foresight. Okay, so our basic agenda is just going to be, you know, AI infecting or affecting, benefiting inspections, how it affects your business in ways that you might not even recognize and some things that might potentially come up in the future. We'll talk a little bit about what AI is, which is artificial intelligence, how it's improving inspections, um, business operations, and the future. So Dylan's going to be talking in a couple of minutes. He is our lab director as well as our, our group product manager uh, for Sporesight. Uh, he is a certified industrial hygienist, uh, a, P, a certified PAACB spore analyst. Uh, he ran a lab in Chicago area for quite some time and has been on, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, building inspections and performed all different kinds of uh, bio biological uh, testing inspections. And one of the things that, that he'll tell you and that we do is we're uh, relentless in the pursuit of, of making our lab excellent at the highest caliber. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got it kind of bolded to make Sporesight an industry leader at the same time of keeping the pricing where uh, it's affordable to inspectors and your and your clients, the home buyers. Uh, this is me. I don't have my camera on because I have a little uh, bandwidth problem right now. But I've been at TechSight for four years, and you'll see I've got TechSight Sporesight there. We'll talk about it's the same company, just different branding. Um, so I've worked on Sporesight part of the company for the entire time. And I worked initially with John Haynes, who's an industry expert. Some of you might recognize that name. I will talk about him more in a minute, but I worked with him on building our data set and working with our developers to create the initial algorithms. Dylan's taken that work over for me as I have branched out as director of sales. Um, and then We've really developed this product as we created the, the AI, we realized that we could, you know, change the way an industry works for the better. And we picked home inspectors as that industry, and that's our focal point, doing mold and, and uh, indoor air quality for particulate. I mean, that's our focus. So you are our clients. A little bit more about TechSite. So TechSite is the, the parent company, and Sporesite sits inside that. So TechSite was founded in 2013. Uh, TechSite, we're, we are world leaders in machine learning and artificial intelligence, kind of similar and one and the same. We use computer vision and digital microscopy, and we really are leading in, in those things. It's just amazing what, what our developers and our team is able to accomplish. Our company focuses on, on doing samples with air, liquids, smearables uh, for digital diagnostic testing. Our products are used by labs, pathologists, doctors, veterinarians, and home inspections around the world. Uh, so this is the suite of our companies. As I mentioned before, the, the parent company, the overarching brand is TechSite, uh, which is number two. Uh, and that focuses on human, human um, digital diagnostic um, analysis. So we do blood, urine, fecal matter, uh, bacteria, dermatology, uh, a bunch of things like that. Um, as I've got in parentheses below, we are going to be announcing probably next week a, a partner, a very big uh, human um, health company that we'll partner with. As you see number one above, that's environmental, so that's spore site, so we do environmental types of analysis and reporting. Um, and then number three, animals, so it would be working and companion animals. We've partnered with a company called Zoetis, and they're, you know, they're on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker symbol is ZTS. They're a $78 billion market cap company. So they're the world leaders. It used to be Pfizer Animal Health. And we white label all our products and they use that and market into their channel. So the reason that I review that is just so you uh, know that our company is, you know, Sporesite's a really important part of our company. 
but we are doing uh, more things with um, at a very, very high level. And in fact, with the human analysis, we have to our our lab has to perform at the same level that the human analysis labs have to perform at. So the the bar is very high for us, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, our lab is located in Utah, uh, Orem, Utah, so a little bit south of Salt Lake City. Uh, when Dylan gets on, he can give you a little bit more introduction to himself. I mentioned John Haynes earlier, who he was a senior scientist in mycology at New York at the for the state of New York. Uh, he's retired now. He's been an instructor at McCrone Research Institute, which is which is probably the leading. Um, research college where where people would go to learn about mold and mycology things like that and he is a world leading mycologist hopefully he's on here i sent him a, a link earlier um so he was our industry expert and our product advisor so our lab we are working on our aiha mpat so you've got that we are iso certified to 13485 and that is what we have to do for um to be a human to, do, for, to perform human testing. So that basically says our software is a medical device. Uh, we're HIPAA compliant, we're CLIA certified, and we are certified in Texas. So I'm going to turn time over for a bit to Dylan. Yeah, so I'll kind of start uh, discussing what AI is. And, and there's a great quote here from Fifi Lee, who's a professor of computer science in Stanford, that discusses how AI really is a fourth industrial revolution. And the way that uh, companies are starting to build tools and resources that utilize computers in this way are really seeing themselves come to the forefront of, of most of these industries. And it's important to know AI isn't coming in and replacing all of us humans. It's not Skynet or, or HAL. Like these are not, uh, you know, probably in our lifetimes will never be to the level where a human's being replaced. What these tools are being done uh, are to augment humans and to split up work that is more uh, beneficial for a computer to take on and then keeping humans uh, to interact with their jobs in ways that humans can. So we interact with these technologies every day, whether you, you realize it or not. Every time you, you type into a Google search, there's an AI algorithm that's being run to show you the best results. It's also showing you what advertising to show you that's relevant to your search. Um, if you're a business owner who uses Google AdWords or Facebook ads, um, they're using artificial intelligence to decide who gets displayed those ads and, and trying to relevant uh, market to relevant people. Do you use Surrey or, or Alexa in your home or on your phone? Uh, that's a side of artificial intelligence called natural language processing that um, is done to uh, you know, interpret and, and also now produce text um, through chat, like chat GPT. It's been in the news a lot and it's generative and it's creating things or Grammarly, which is a plugin I really love uh, that helps, you know, you can change how the, the, the body of your text feels and um, how you're writing as well as dynamically correct things, uh, like grammar and, and spelling mistakes. So this is a great slide. This is one of the slides, like we've revamped our slideshows probably four or five times since I've been at TechSite. And this is a slide that has lived through every iteration and it's a really great representation it was probably a little more relevant when Tony Stark and Iron Man was, was still in the theaters and um, you know, is still part of the Avengers, but AI plus humans is really what's unleashing the full potential of, of these computers. Um, you know, Tony Stark is nothing without his, his, um, his suit of armor and also his, his virtual assistant uh, in that, uh, in his suit. So, Humans are really good at some things, critical thinking, making us at these abstract associations, um, digesting visual and, and data in a way that, that human and our brain work really well. But computers are really good at doing things consistently and doing things repeatably. So they can process every single pixel of an image countless times, uh, where a human, every time you look at an image, 
you might be seeing things a little differently. So what you get when you pair a human and a computer together is you're going to start getting some utilities and tools that uh, have not been uh, conceivable beforehand. Um, and we'll kind of get into a few of these here in just a moment. And as far as what is going to help the home inspector. Um, so here's a, here's a great summary of, of the benefits of using tools like this is it looks at the same things the same way each time. It never has to eat or sleep. So it's available whenever you need it to. Doesn't get tired. It's Monday morning. It's just as good as it's Friday afternoon. Um, and it, it's consistency, consistency all the time. Um, if these systems are built right, which is a big struggle. And, and there's a reason why uh, you're not seeing these things pop up all the time, but there are some great utilities that, that we have found at trade shows and, and other events that, that we're gonna kind of jump into here in a minute. So here are just some more examples of things that you're using every day that is revolve around AI. Mobile check deposits. I can't imagine the last time I've been to a bank to deposit a check because I can do it on my phone through an app. We've got biometric security on our phones, face ID, fingerprint scanning. Um, those are using artificial intelligence because your face doesn't look the same way every day. Your fingerprints will change if you've washed your hands recently or maybe you've got a, a cut or a scrape or something on your fingerprint. Uh, it still can can adapt to these things um, as opposed to just recalling a saved fingerprint. E-commerce, if you ever had a, a, a proposed, you know, when you're shopping on Amazon and it pops up and says uh, recommended products, that's AI that's finding that. Um, there, it's all around us. And it, it, every year, more and more, we're finding more utilities that are uh, branching outside of these these environments, the tech world, and into other industries, uh, such as home inspection. So the very first kind of part of our discussion, we're going to talk about how uh, you can improve your home inspections using AI tools. Um, these are products that are currently on the market. Um, you know, we're not going to get too, too deep into uh, specific manufacturers or, or companies. Uh, this is more conceptual. So um, you know, these are things we've seen on the trade show floor over the last couple of years, and we've seen more and more. So a big thing with AI is computer vision. We talked about it uh, a little earlier, uh, but these are some things that we've seen. And it seems like the pairing of a drone, an autonomous drone with AI um, are, is seemingly really powerful in these, in these uh, tasks that computers are really good at. So one thing that AI is doing uh, is is plant, planning flight paths uh, as opposed to sitting there and piloting your drone and, and collecting video or, or you know doing a, a, a roof assessment from far away or a chimney assessment uh, something that you can't access uh, safely without the drone um, there are some drones out there that will automatically build these flight paths and they can be tied into some other things like uh, some software that can do automated damage evaluations. You can see there on the top right, this is a, uh, um, a piece of software that will analyze drone video and find flaws or potential flaws in materials like uh, damage roofing uh, materials, uh, looking for hail damage on roofs or missing shingles, finding things like clog gutters, um, cracked brickwork, bad masonry, things like that are all things that these soft, uh, the software that can be paired with drones to do, um, you pair that with an, an AI powered flight path, there's a potential there where you can have your drone fly and collect this video while you're working on other tasks around the house. Maybe you're um, you know, looking at the, the slope of the yard or doing other things outside while your drone is, is collecting its video. Um, another one that is um, becoming more and more interesting and uh, maybe more so for uh, commercial assessments than a home inspection or uh, automated 3D site rendering. These drones can fly around, map out the building in 3D. Um, it can de detect these air handling units and other um, utilities that are mounted on the roof or other areas of the, of, the, of the structure and automatically plot these things out into software that uh, um, you know, there's some human intervention, you'd come in afterwards and correct some of the, the little mistakes, but it really takes a lot of the, the work out of doing a really detailed uh, site uh, plan like that. Um, so 
Another one, it's a similar technology, but we're using it now underground in, in, in uh, sewer and, and uh, pipe work as opposed to around a structure. So the same uh, computer vision type technology can be used to, to automate your sewer inspections. Here's a really great uh, screenshot from, from some software that found a crack in a, in a concrete uh, pipe segment sewer main. Um, you can flag these things automatically in the recording, provide a geotagged and time-stamped uh, uh, image for your video to say, okay, we found a crack at two minutes and 45 seconds, and here is pr approximately where it's located in the pipe, finding clogs, major, 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 minor, maybe even identifying what is causing the clog uh, in the plumbing. The computer vision aspect is something that's very helpful and doesn't necessarily need to be on a scope or on a drone. Um, there's potential here for applications using your smartphone um, or any other video or, or, or camera source to um, automate and find these, uh, detect these issues. Um, somewhat um, automated because you still need to have the experience to, to say, yes, that is in fact a crack or yes, I think that uh, shingle is damaged, uh, but it's just helps speed things up. So you're reviewing maybe 30 pieces of uh, information as opposed to looking over an entire structure, uh, very detailed. So the next, um, the next technology we're gonna talk about is uh, really close to what we do, and it's laboratory analysis. Uh, I think you cut forward a couple slides there, Jim. Let's see. I don't know. Ashley might have changed. Uh, we might have switched it up. Okay. So I'm going to let Jim take over here. But um, yeah, so another way that AI is affecting home inspections is in the laboratory analysis side of things, which is uh, what we do here at Sporesight for mold and air quality. So I'm going to let Jim take over here and, and discuss kind of our business and and what we do. Awesome. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, it's, it really is. It's, you know, it's like home inspection is really, there's so many, so much new things going on, you know, from the reporting software, things like we're doing drones, um, um, you know, little robots and things just opening up, up lots of cool services and things for inspectors to do. So we're going to talk a little bit about here about our, our products for site, what we do, I wanted to lead this off with kind of what what the goals we think about every day and with everything we do, what we're trying to accomplish. The first one is, you know, make your make your life better, make home inspectors lives better. Once we got our algorithms down where we were uh, more consistent, faster, more um, accurate than current current methods. And we'll talk about that in a minute. You know, then it's like, how do we how do we roll this product out? Who do we roll this product out to? How can we really make an impact? So you'll see as we talk about our report, how one way we're striving to make your life better. Uh, another thing that we try and do is continuously innovate. So right now you'll see our report and then you'll, you'll we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit about, we're working on a new um, web app where you'll be able to fill the chain of custody out on your phone. And after that, we're gonna update our report. We're gonna continuously keep adding adding things to improve the report and what we do. One of our goals is to be an industry leader. I mean, we really want to set the pace um, and provide absolutely the best product to you and your clients who are the home buyers. Uh, and finally, you know, like real estate, they always say location, location, location. For, so for us, it's service, service, service. So you've got to have that level of service um, and support for you guys. So Big part of number one, making your life better, easier, is providing a report that's you know clear, fast, easy, easy to understand, and high, high found, high, high value. Um, so as we get going into a report, you'll see that for environmental sampling, we're looking at mold spores. We count and classify them. We're also looking for all the particulates. Um, we put a lot of particulates on our report. Um, and you'll see that. And then we also add up everything we find. We don't put everything we find into the report, but at the end of the report, we count and size all, all the particulates that we find and mold spores. So into a total count, uh, which, which is going to be more and more interesting as time passes and we add more uh, elements to our report. So the first, the first thing to note, um, one thing we talked about or I mentioned a minute ago is like, 
what we're how we're using AI, and we also use a human interface with it, but you know, versus the current and past lab techniques. So one of the things that's really allowed us to develop our product and uh, to allow all this artificial intelligence is is really based maybe on gaming because for gaming to create these graphics and the demand for you know kids and people to play you know video games they just needed computer chips that could support mass amounts of you know mathematics and data analysis so they've created special special um chips called graphical uh, gpus that really just focus on doing the mathematics to make these to do um, all this analysis versus just a CPU, which is a, just a more general kind of chip on your computer to do word processing or some light mathematics. So one of the things that AI allows us to do is to read 100% of the sample versus current lab techniques. They have a human, as you can see in that picture on the left, and they look through a microscope and they and they count what they see. But because of the, the time involved in a human and just manual counting, they don't have the ability to look at 100% of the sample. So this is kind of a, a breakdown of, of our analysis on the right. We look at the entire sample. So it actually takes the computer um, and software several minutes to analyze a sample. And depending on how much material is on the sample, you know, sometimes it could take 15 minutes. So Sometimes it's it's very quick, but depending on how much it's doing, it can really take quite a bit of time. But the computer's doing it, so you know it's a human's not doing it. We're in the current lab analysis. A uh, uh, analyst will look at particular portions of the slide, but they won't look at all of it. So in this in this diagram, we've got these gray areas, which would which would indicate areas that they're not able to look. One thing that we've found, and we'll show you a little bit in a minute, is oftentimes the mold spores are clumped together. So if you find those spores or you miss those spores in this, you know, 30% analysis, and then you use statistics to kind of normalize the rest of the sample, you could be high or low. Um, so it just presents a lot more opportunity to, you know, not have a completely accurate analysis. So, and again, you know, until these GPU chips and, you know, us spending years developing and millions and millions of dollars, you know, it just, it wasn't possible to do it any other way. So as we talked about, I'm gonna back up really quick, but as we talked about, you know, these clumps of spores, this is something that we do, our software looks for specifically. So it looks for individual spores like these ones in the right-hand corner, but we also look for things like strings and clumps. So Aspergillus penicillium, as you know, is a very important spore because it grows outside, but it also grows inside on building materials. Uh, you can see in this graphic, this kind of blue graphic, it's, it's, a, it's a drawing, but it shows how the Aspergillus penicillium spores grow. It's kind of like a dandelion with the growth structure, and then you've got the, the seeds that kind of fan out. Well, this mold spore grows in chains or strings, one on top of each other, and then you can see the strings growing off that. So as the as the mold dies and stops growing, the individual spores will pop off. Uh, or as it floats away from the growth source, it gets further away, it dries up or bumps into a wall or or something. So they get individual spores. So we, but when it's fresh and you're close to the growth source, you'll find these strings of spores. So uh, the the second to the right and third top row, those show the the spores that are strings. So we're looking, our AI is looking for those strings and we count those strings. Kind of that lower picture where it's kind of shows a clump of spores, that lower left-hand picture, that would be like a string of spores that coming come in at a vertical angle. And when they hit, they kind of spread out. They're in a string, but when they hit the gel pad in the air cassette, they, they spread out into a group like that. So that's a really strong indicator that you're closer to an active growth source. So we're looking for things like that and counting things like that. So it's super important that we cover the whole sample to be able to get accurate counts on things like that. So I mentioned our report is designed so it's very easy for you or for your, for your customer, the home buyer, uh, to read. So we feel that serving you, you know, making your life the best by making, you know, a report that appeals to them and can be easily digested by them without your spending, you know, a lot of time interpreting it for them. That saves you time and gives them something very valuable. So we've designed our report for the home buyer. Uh, there's basically 
three main parts of our report. You can see number one, at a glance page, which we provided this graphic green, yellow, red to indicate if there's a, a concentration of mold spores to be concerned with. Uh, that second lab result is at the second part of our report. Um, and I, I'll mention that we do both air samples. You're seeing the air sample diagram or graphics right here. We also do surface samples, so swab and tape. Uh, and they have a, a different kind of graphic, but a similar graphic. Uh, so then we have our lab results page. We've, di we've divided our lab results into kind of three categories. We've got uh, of mold spores. So you've got predominantly indoor water related. And these are the spores that are really critical in, a, in an analysis and a test that you do. So we put these right up front. So these are spores that grow good. They don't grow so, they don't, uh, we don't find them so often in outdoor samples. We find them more often in indoor samples. So these spores, this group of spores grow well on building materials indoors when there's a moisture issue. So the second group of spores that you see there, indoor, outdoor, those grow well outdoor and indoor. Those are the most common spores. So we, we check those and, and uh, we also always want an outdoor sample so we can you know, kind of have a, a comparison there. We do have a third group, it doesn't show on this, on this page, but it's the indoor outdoor spores, or, or excuse me, they're the outdoor spores. So they don't grow typically indoors, but we count those as well. I think we have about, I don't know, Dylan, a hundred, how many spores do we have on our report? Um, we're, we report on, I think, probably 30, I think 35 different spore classes, but some of them are pretty large groups like a basidiospore, which are come from mushrooms outdoors and they can come from any type of mushroom or bracket outdoors. So there's potentially, you know, hundreds of different uh, species that we just group in as basidiospores because they're uh, in the frame of a home inspection, they're all considered uh, equal as opposed to as a, as importance. So um, we train our AI models on about 160 different classes of, of spores, but we, we combine them and, and parse them down into a more digestible amount for the report because um, once you, if you were to have a report that long, it's hard to see what's important and what's not. So we don't always report on every single different thing that we find, we've, we've really made the report following industry standards and, and expanding on them uh, somewhat uh, as well. Um, but yeah, we, we, we report on probably, I'd say maybe 50 classes of spores and particulates, but we train on, on over 150. Awesome, thanks. So then the third part of our report is the images page. And obviously we have a cover page and a, and a back page. Uh, and these are sandwiched in between, but we have an images page and these are actual images uh, from the report. And again, the AI that we use allows us to create these kinds of reports. And that's why I, we've included it here. So we're able, because we're using digital microscopy to provide you a lot of different images, kind of at a lot of different um, you know, magnifications. So here on the left-hand side, you've got these two vertical uh, images. And those are tr that's the trace. So as air gets sucked through the cassette and you know into the air pump, uh, there's that there's a glass slide or a glass um, kind of like a cover slip, and on that is is a gel pad, and the particulates that get sucked in there get stuck on the gel pad. So this we're giving you this side by side visual of what the outside air trace and the inside air trace, you know, from the location that we're looking at. And in this one, it's the basement. So you can get just kind of a visual uh, analysis on how clean or dirty you know the air is, and especially relative to the outside air, you'd always want to have your indoor air cleaner. But as this as this example shows, like the indoor air in this one's pretty dirty. Um, so it also gives you you know that the reference of that location in the the home of just like how dirty the air in general is. Um, we've got the 30x zoomed image, which shows, you know, it's just kind of a nice to get uh, a closer up image of the general, a general part of the sample. So one of the things that this is great, great at is if you, I had a guy from Arizona call a few months ago, and it was a, an eight unit uh, apartment complex, and they had just done a total remodel. 
and seven of the eight units came back with just tons of of, of mold spores and strings of, of aspergillus penicillium he, and he called me up he's like i just can't even imagine this i couldn't believe the guy wanted this but you know I, I just can't explain why we've got all this mold. So he's like, I don't know how to approach the owner and, and tell him this. So I'm like, well, let's just jump right to the, you know, we looked at the, the numbers and the, that it was highlighted in the graphic red. So he said, let's look at the pictures. And you could just see in the pictures, all the mold. I'm like, the pictures don't lie. So it's easy to go back and tell the owner, like, you know, you have a mold problem and here I can actually show you these pictures. You know, there is mold. So it, it's not a mistake. And that this works so good in helping people, you know, realize like there's a there's a problem or a big problem, minor problem. And one of the things I like to tell inspectors is this report is designed to protect your home buyer and their investment. So it's not designed to kill a deal. You know, it's designed to if there's a problem, figure out a way, you know, to resolve it. So most of the time there is a way to to fix these things. So anyway, back to the 30x zoom, you can see in this. Uh, there's, you know, some some little spores, these brown round things right here. There's a lot of debris in there. There's lots some soil, uh, a little bit of carbon dust in there, some skin fragments, these these light blue things. Um, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Then finally, on the images page, we have notable objects that are important. So a lot of times, you know, you'll have the strings of spores, which on this this fourth, this third and fourth of the top row, those show strings. Of, of spores. And if you were looking in this 30x zoom thing and you were quickly going through that, it'd be almost impossible to pick out these little tiny groups of spores. Um, so then you've all we also just put, you know, things, things of interest. So again, sometimes people act, ask and want to make sure those are really the actual pictures, you know, from that room or from that home. Yes, these are the actual, this is the actual air of those sample locations. No stock footage here. So finally, on our report, we are reporting on particulate, as I mentioned above. So, you know, here we've got pollen, skin fragments broken down into human skin fragments and animal skin fragments. We we also detect uh, bird skin fragments, which one day, uh, you know, probably four months ago, Dylan called me up. He's like, could you call that inspector, see if they have birds in that home? And sure enough, they had birds. So we collected some some bird skin fragments. I've had inspectors ask me if I can tell a mouse skin fragment and we we haven't tried to crack that code so at this point we don't and i i don't know if we could but we haven't tried uh so we we detect carbon dust soil starch fibers we have other things but we don't put them on our report uh, we also don't put things on there if we don't find it we wouldn't put it on here so we we give you the you know count of those things in the area also compared here to the outdoor sample so finally, we total everything up. So this is where I was saying we take the mold spores and count them. We take all the particulates that you see here and even particulates that you don't see here. And we count all those things up. And then we put them in categories by size. So you can see that we've got less than 2.5 microns, 2.5 to 10, and then greater than 10 microns. So as time goes by, this is going to become more important to people you know, for, for health health risks, uh, respiratory issues, things like that. So more to come on that. We're also going to work at the end of this year on creating a indoor air quality for particulate graphic, similar to the, the mold graphic, where we will use tens of thousands of samples that we've taken and then figure out, you know, what's a, you know, more of a cleanish home versus a very dirty home. So that's one of those things that we're innovating on. And because of AI, we can do these things that would be impossible to do under the you know, current way of being able to count and classify and, and analyze these spores and particulates. So I put this sample in here just for fun. I, I like to joke, we got this one probably in, in uh, January or December. And I, my immediate thing was like, this must have come from Maine. It's a Maine, Maine lobster. So we don't know exactly what this came from obviously some kind of a an insect um dylan had some ideas on on what it might be from but as you can see how much bigger that is than some of these little tiny mold spores around it but it's fun that we find these needles in the haystack you know when they're there uh b this is a this is a scale from an insect um c these are stachybotrys spores and we also look for what the growth structure of these things called a canidia for 
You can see here's an insect, it's kind of cool. And then just a couple more mold spores. So more than anything, I just put those in there because they're they're cool. Um, our pricing is just $20 a sample. It's the same price for, for an air sample or a swab. Uh, so that's the analysis and the reporting costs. We charge that, you know, once we send you the report, then we charge you for the, re the report. Um, we also, you can use return envelopes and, and uh, labels from us if you want. Those are $28. Or you can send it on your own, and it's just $20 a sample. Um, if you go to our website, if, you, if you're not doing mold inspections now, we have a starter kit, and we will give you and a switch kit. If you are doing mold inspections now, you've already got your pump. Um, but we'll we'll give you the first three samples for free. So the, the lab fees are free uh, for the first three, and we'll give you the report. So we want you to, to give us a try, and we want to earn your business. Uh, so you can visit us at sporesite.com for that. Uh, and you can also just register uh, as a as an as you know an account on there by using the head and shoulders icon on the website. So really just call me if you've got more questions. All right, I'll turn it over to Dylan. Yeah, so now that you've kind of learned a few ways that AI can can improve your inspection offerings or maybe optimize your workflow at a structure, you know, you may already own a drone, but uh, flying it uh, remotely would be uh, more interesting, you know, free up some time or uh, you want to, you know, do it better by your inspect, uh, your clients, your inspection clients. We're kind of going to shift gears into ways that uh, AI can just help you run your business. Um, you know, uh, I think something like 76% of home inspectors are sole practitioners. You might have one home inspector and then you may have an assistant or a secretary or your wife or uh, your husband who runs the business while you're doing uh, the inspections. There are some tools out there that are based off of AI that are every year more and more of these things are hitting the market and, and becoming more accessible to small businesses. Um, one thing you may already be using is uh, voice recognition and, and, and uh, voice assistance, Siri, Cortana, Alexa, Google Assistant. These are things that you may, uh, we talk to home inspectors that like to dictate their notes. You know, they'll talk to Siri their whole inspection so they don't have to jot notes down. They can just be talking and, uh, and the, the, the app will be transcribing what they're saying. Um, and if you ever use those things, you know every year they're getting better and better. They're not perfect. Um, but there are some business focused solutions as well as these commercial, um, these more just general technology that are, you know, built into your smartphone or your, your, your smartwatch or your tablet. So there are some business focused solutions like, uh, customer support. Um, it's really not terribly, uh, difficult to have a, a custom AI based chat bot that can handle customer support. Every time you log on and you talk to someone in a chat uh, with your cable company or your utility company or your phone bill, more than likely anymore, that is actually a computer that's talking back to you. And some of them are more frustrating than others, but there are some that can handle um, general things like scheduling. You know, it, it can say, hey, I am a client uh, with an appointment on uh, Thursday uh, at noon. And then they can respond back and ask you to verify some information to make sure it's not someone just playing games and, and messing with your calendar. Uh, once they verify that that person checks out, they say, okay, the calendar looks to be available on a Friday or, or Saturday. Um, it can automate scheduling or rescheduling of appointments, answer some basic questions, even uh, interface and, and have people uh, pay bills if, if uh, they want to prepay or anything like that. Um, that's a really powerful tool that that's AI based that you could be doing right away. Um, travel uh, with with home inspectors, you know, if you ever get called out and, and there's probably a few of you out there that that might get called out to a big project, maybe a military base or something where you have to travel. Um, there are AI based business travel agencies out there now where you can say, I've got to go to Kansas City on uh, next Friday and 
it will know, you know, you, you, you tell it, you know, the airlines you fly or if you want a rental car and it can book these things for you at the best rate they can. Another thing is business expense tracking and, and uh, uh, you know, running a small business, keeping track of your receipts and then categorizing those correctly can be a big pain when you go to do your taxes and, and your business financials. And there's things that can do that for you um, automatically, as well as just general accounting. And again, all these things that are using prediction-based uh, technology or, or, tr or, um, or doing these things that are, are automated are almost always relying on AI and not hard-coded responses. Another big thing uh, that can help grow your business is, is AI-powered marketing. And there's different things available depending on what you might need. Advertising, so if you're using Google AdWords or Facebook ads or any other um, ad marketplace, there's already ad, your placements is, are being handled by an algorithm that's been programmed by those companies. Uh, but there are tools out there that can help you optimize uh, your ad campaigns. And if, if anyone here has ever tried to set up a, a Google AdWords campaign with no experience, it's daunting. There are a lot of nuances. The rules are always changing and they're not telling you how they're changing. It's, you know, the, the people are figuring out how the algorithm's changing over time, how to optimize your, your, um, your text in your, in your ads, how your ads are structured, constantly testing, which is best. And there's services out there that will, um, that will help do that for you and, and help optimize your ads to get the best responses back. SEO is a big one. If you want, you know, if you search, uh, home inspections Tampa, and you want to be the first person to pop up on that Google search, that's SEO, search engine optimization. It's another daunting task with a lot of, in, you know, there's always a contractor out there looking to take your money. Um, you don't know how good they are at the, at, at the actual business of, of optimizing websites and for uh, search engines, but there are also um, services that use AI that will generate blogs and other content that help propel your business higher up into the search rankings. Um, website design, uh, there are some AI tools that even companies like us use um, to see how people interact with your website, to see, to follow the customer through their, their, um, their time on your website. Are they going to your, are they finding your contact information? Are they submitting an email form or calling you? Um, what, what pages are might be frustrating or broken even, uh, and, and they can report on things that you can improve your website because more and more every, you know, I, I can't speak for, uh, home inspectors, uh, specifically, but when I was doing environmental consulting, almost all of our, um, almost all of our business came driven through search engine placement and, uh, and our website being able to actually contact, uh, and get quotes on uh, projects or scheduling questions, all sorts of things. Um, and these can really help you if, if you're tied down with a lot of inspections, you can't really get back to the website as, as you'd like. Um, there are some services out there that really help, um, help people who might not be technical make these smart informed choices that can help grow their business and, and simplify some of those uh, tasks that it takes. So you can spend more time out in the field doing the job that you like in less time, um, doing the things, you know, behind the scenes that, that take, that it takes to actually run a business. And then another section, and, and this is, like I said earlier, one of my favorite things is remote check cashing. You never have to go to the bank anymore. Um, there's also ways that you can do that with, with general documents. We have some home inspectors that we talk to they love their checklists. And these are checklists that they have curated over years of experience to say, I know when I go to a residential home, this checklist is, is, is key. Obviously, you're going to find things outside of that list, but they know if they've gone through their checklist, they know that it, they've done a great job. Now, the hard part is, is, digit, is typing all that into a computer or into a report even. Uh, it, data entry takes a long time. And uh, there's a lot of transcription errors that could, could happen. If you switch a few de uh, decimal places or digits out of order, it could be a big difference. Um, and it's going to be a big mistake. So there are uh, 
document scanning that can be done that can take your checklist and know exactly what each field means and put it into um, reporting or digital uh, spreadsheets or other software automatically so you don't need to worry about manual data entry. Chat GPT, that was all over the news uh, in the last few months. It's actually been around for quite a while. We, we talk about it internally at, at, at our company uh, because it's, it's, it's pretty impressive what they've done. But this is generative. It could help you rewrite, you know, the way people are using it professionally. Say you've written up a few paragraphs in a report and it doesn't quite feel right, or you want to make it feel a little more professional or a little more um, the other way, maybe you want to you want to simplify it in layman's terms. You could put in your work into a tool like that and it could return text that's been uh, altered to, to have a different uh, voice or a different uh, feel to it. Um, those are some pretty powerful tools that, that you could be using uh, in, in your business pretty much right away if, if you had a need for it. Now, this is kind of the most esoteric part of this because we don't know what, what the future holds. And we, you know, 10 years ago, you could have never predicted uh, what we're seeing today um, with some of these AI tools. And even five years ago or two years ago, we're, we're, we're making advancements at consistently across all industries that it's hard to say what's coming in the future. So these are some things that we've kind of put together and things that we've heard about people working on. These are not short-term uh, possibilities. These are, you know, five years down the road. These are some things that, that may be even longer. Uh, a big one is the multi, multimodal prediction tools. Now, homes as homes continue to get built every year we've got new smart sensors we've got new um, iot internet of things we've got new devices that get connected to the web that can be tracking things um, you know leak detection uh, all sorts of sensors you know things that that we haven't even thought of yet will be on the market and there's a potential there if someone were to put together uh, a way to connect these systems and interpret their their readouts in a way that you could start be start to to predict when faults may be occurring or when uh, you know things might uh, beginning to have flaws. Environmental data is a big one. If you could be tracking all sorts of things with sensors, you wouldn't need to come out and do a mold test with us anymore because there's a sensor in the home that's constantly monitoring for. Um, airborne pollens and mold and particulate and VOCs and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. And it could monitor these things over time and AI could then start to predict when things may be a concern and, and to trigger an alert for, for someone to come out and do a visual uh, site assessment. The, the possibility is really endless with, with uh, technology like that. Uh, it's really is, it, it's gonna take someone other than us to, to put these solutions together, but it's before we know it, I, I think there'll be things like that out there. Uh, imagine when they built the first automobile, if they thought you could just plug into a, a socket and get a readout that the, the first cylinder on the engine has a, a misfire and the, the exhaust temperature is slightly too hot, they would have thought you were crazy uh, that in, you know, just a short amount of time, you know, 60, 70 years down the road, you'd have something like that. Um, that would have been unheard of, but now we do. We have these cars that even now, the new cars on the on the lot, so you can check some systems just from the app on your phone because they're connected to the web. Uh, there's no reason a, a home in the future couldn't be in a similar way with the right, uh, right tools and uh, construction and the interface to tie them all together and then some smart people to, to start putting out um, tools to interpret the signals as, as uh, you know, when things could be uh, causing issues. And then another one, this one's probably closer than we realize, is an automated reporting system. Like I said, the voice recognition in these, in these apps aren't perfect yet, but they're getting better every year. And if you could just imagine that you're just walking through doing your your property inspection and you're dictating what you're seeing and you're taking photos to document what you're seeing. And you don't have to do 
any handwritten notes or anything like that uh, because the the actual reporting software is is it knows where you are in the structure you know you've taken a 3d scan of the entire home on your smartphone because you know you don't need a big matterport device for that now because it's all in your phone um your drone's flying outside doing the outside um inspection while you're inside you know dictating to your phone what you're seeing and, and taking pictures um and then it spits out a report pretty much by the time you're done talking it, it's put together a report that you review correct any mistakes because again these computer systems aren't perfect we can't take the hands off the wheel. They're not doing our jobs for us. They're just helping us do our jobs better. Um, something like that is another future tool that, that uh, you know, I could see coming to the industry, um, you know, within a, a short amount of time, sooner than, than we might think within five, 10 years, something like it could be possible. And, and then the sky's the limit, you know, if, if I had the answers of what AI tools could be uh, developed in 10 years, uh, for this industry, and then I'd be starting a business trying to do it. Um, but you know, we don't have it just takes someone to have these novel ideas and the technical uh, training to to start to figure it out. And, and, uh, and we'll see more and more each year at the trade shows. Uh, we see some more uh, interesting and novel approaches to, to, to problems that home inspectors have or ways to make uh, inspectors lives and businesses run run smarter so um you know, who knows what's what's down the line beyond these these few things here so that's kind of the end of our formal presentation we've got a few minutes here at the end for questions and answers if anyone has questions um about anything we've talked about you know you want to pick our brains about about anything we we had uh in the presentation or you want to Ask Jim more questions about Spore Site. Uh, we're, we're available here for questions live, and then uh, we'll get your contact information if you want to send us an email or, or a phone call and, and ask us any more questions. In the, the chat and the questions, and I haven't seen anything come through. Um, so if, if, you know, when you're sitting at the dinner table tonight and you, you realize that, that you, you do have a question, um, you can reach out to Jim, our director of sales, uh, his, his email and phone number are there and we're really accessible here. You know, if you give us a call or an email, I joke with Jim all the time that he's, he needs to do some vocal training because he's going to strain his vocal cords because he's on the phone all the time talking with inspectors and just, you know, they're calling with questions and Jim just, just loves to chat with them and, and have a great conversation. So um, if you want to give Jim a call or an email, you can reach out to him here or, or go to our website, sportsite.com, if you, you want to learn more about our product. But uh, yeah, we enjoyed uh, presenting for you guys today. And I'll let Jim uh, wrap it up if he's got anything more to say. Thank you. I'll just say thanks again to InterNACHI and all the InterNACHI inspectors that, that joined and will you know see this in the future. Um, it's great working with InterNACHI. It's a great organization, and we look forward to seeing everybody at the show. You know, at the end of this year, um, and you've got my my cell phone there and my email address. So call if you've got questions or email me with questions. Uh, go to sportsite.com. We've tried to have a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, website that gets you a lot of information about who we are and what we do, how we do it, and and we'd love to work with you. So thanks very much. Thank you.